Hello there and welcome to another video with me Rufus Gazelle and today we are in Sevenhampton in Wiltshire to pay our respects to the late great Ian Fleming buried here at this very church behind me. So we are here in Sevenhampton guys where we are going to be paying our respects to the late great Ian Fleming here at this church St James's Church in Sevenhampton and the sun is beaming through the trees in front of me. Sorry about the glare there, I do apologise, but we're gonna walk through this gate here and already, already, I can see his grave. It stands out amongst all the other graves here in this graveyard. It literally is right in front of me. So yeah, I mean, I've only literally walked to the gate and already I've spotted it. So, and it's a fantastic memorial, gravestone it's, it's like a miniature monument it's absolutely breathtaking but we'll go over there in a minute and take a look first obviously I want to talk about the man himself the history and life of Ian Fleming and what he's best known for and we all know exactly what he's best known for and that is the creator of the most iconic and most famous spy in the world and that is 007 himself James Bond. So how are we all doing today guys? I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm doing rather well in terms of the weather is being extremely generous to me. Unlike last weekend where I got absolutely soaked, today the rays of sunshine are beaming down on me through the trees and hopefully it stays that way. Touch wood and no doubt my head is made of plenty of wood but we're going to walk around this churchyard now and talk a little bit more about Ian Fleming as a man. Hopefully I don't waffle on too much because we all know you're here to see the graveyard, the, the actual gravestone, the memorial of Ian Fleming and that is what you want to see and not me rabble on and on and on about dates, times, where he worked, what he did. Although I find it quite interesting and some of you do also find it quite interesting. So I will hopefully briefly touch upon his life and career but I can't guarantee it will be a short one because this man has many stories to tell in terms of his adventures not only as an author but during the war years so let's get started shall we this is the grave of Ian Fleming here at Sevenhampton in Wiltshire and yes it's so peaceful with these lovely surrounding fields, surrounding St. James's Church right behind me. Ian Lancaster Fleming was born on the 28th of May, 1908, at 27 Green Street in the wealthy London district of Mayfair. His mother was Evelyn Eve Fleming and his father was Valentin Fleming, the Member of Parliament for Henley from 1910 until his death on the Western Front in 1917. As an infant, he briefly lived with his family at Braziers Park in Oxfordshire. Fleming was a grandson of a Scottish financier, Robert Fleming, who co-founded the Scottish American Investment Company and the merchant bank, Robert Fleming & Co. When his father was killed in France during World War I on November 20, 1917, future Prime Minister Winston Churchill wrote the obituary for the London Times. Ian Fleming was educated at Durnford School in Dorset and later at Eton College and the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst. And although he achieved some recognition at Eton for academic excellence, he dropped out of both Eton and Sandhurst when he felt that both schools were not challenging him. His mother sent him to study languages in Austria and later to both the University of Munich and the University of Geneva, where he learned German and French. After an unsuccessful attempt to join the Foreign Office, he became a journalist for the Reuters News Service. In 1939, he was recruited by Rear Admiral John Godfrey, Director of Naval Intelligence, to be his personal assistant. Admiral Godfrey put Fleming in charge of Operation Goldeneye between 1941 and 1942. Goldeneye was a plan to maintain an intelligence framework in Spain in the event of a German takeover of that territory. Fleming's plan involved maintaining communication with Gibraltar and launching sabotage operations against the Nazis. In 1941, he liaised with Donovan over American involvement in a measure intended to ensure the Germans did not dominate the seaways. He was quickly commissioned a reserve lieutenant and later promoted to lieutenant commander. 
During the war, he worked on various intelligence plans, including one to capture the German Enigma communications decoder and another plan to defend Gibraltar, should Spain join the Axis powers. Neither plan was used. In 1942, Fleming created the 30th Assault Unit, a unit formed out of commandos known as Number 30 Commando, or 30 Assault Unit, composed of specialist intelligence troops specifically trained for behind-the-lines intelligence gathering work, which made successful missions in Sicily and Italy. The success of 30 Assault Unit led to the August 1944 decision to establish a target force which became known as T-Force, where Fleming sat on the committee that selected the targets for the T-Force unit and listed them in the black books that were issued to the unit's officers. It was responsible for securing targets of interest for the British military, including nuclear laboratories, gas research centres and individual rocket scientists. The unit's most notable discoveries came during the advance on the German port of Kiel in the research centre for German engines used in the V2 rocket Mrs. Schmidt ME163 fighters and high-speed U-boats. Fleming would later use elements of the activities of Task Force in his writings, particularly in his 1955 Bond novel, Moonraker. In 1942, Fleming attended an Anglo-American intelligence summit in Jamaica, and despite the constant heavy rain during his visit, he decided to live on the island once the war was over. His friend Ivor Bryce helped him find a plot of land in St Mary Parish, where in 1945, Fleming had a house built, which he named Goldeneye. The name of the house and estate where he wrote the novels has many possible sources to why it was called this. Fleming himself mentioned both his wartime operation Goldeneye and Carson McCullough's 1941 novel Reflections in a Goldeneye, which described the use of British naval bases in the Caribbean by the American Navy as the reasons behind naming his house by that name. Fleming was also friends with British Prime Minister Anthony Eden, whom he allowed to stay at Goldeneye in late November 1953 due to Eden's deteriorating health. Fleming's love life wasn't far off like being a story from one of his books. Anne Charteris had divorced her husband, the second Viscount Rothermere, because of an affair with the author Ian Fleming. And after the war, he married her, Anne Geraldine Mary Fleming, and they had one child, a son, Caspar Robert Fleming, in 1952. Fleming had first mentioned to his friends during the war that he wanted to write a spy novel, an ambition he achieved within two months with Casino Royale. He started writing the book at Goldeneye on the 17th of February 1952, gaining inspiration from his own experiences and imagination. He claimed afterwards that he wrote the novel to distract himself from his forthcoming wedding to pregnant Charteris. Casino Royale in 1953 was the first of 12 James Bond novels packed with violent action, hairbreadth escapes, international espionage, clever spy gadgets, intrigue and gorgeous women. The books became international bestsellers. The Bond books gained wide popularity in the United States after the newly elected president, John F. Kennedy, named a Bond novel on his list of favorite books in 1961. The novel centers on the exploits of James Bond, an officer in the secret intelligence service, commonly known as MI6. Bond is also known by his code number 007 and was a commander in the Royal Naval Reserve. Fleming took the name for his character from that of an American ornithologist James Bond, an expert on the Caribbean birds and author of the definitive field guide Birds of the West Indies. Fleming himself, a keen bird watcher, had a copy of Bond's guide and later told the ornithologist's wife that this brief unromantic Anglo-Saxon and yet very masculine name was just what I needed and so a second Bond was born. Many of the names used in the Bond works came from people Fleming knew. Scaramanga, the principal villain in The Man with the Golden Gun, was named after a fellow Eton schoolboy with whom Fleming fought. Goldfinger, from the infamous novel, was named after British architect Erno Goldfinger, whose work Fleming adored. So Hugo Drax, the antagonist of Moonraker, was named after Fleming's acquaintance, Admiral Sir Reginald Drax. For the first five books, Casino Royale, Live and Let Die, Moonraker, Diamonds Are Forever and From Russia With Love, Fleming received broadly positive reviews, but sadly, a few of the books that followed did not fare as well, getting extremely harsh criticism, like the novel 
Dr No. Paul Johnson of the New Statesman saw no positives in Dr No and said Mr Fleming has no writing skills, the construction of the book is chaotic and entire incidents and situations are inserted and then forgotten in a haphazard manner. Fleming's books had always sold well but in 1961 sales increased dramatically. On the 17th of March 1961, four years after its publication and three years after the heavy criticism of Dr No, an article in Life listed from Russia with Love as one of US President John F. Kennedy's ten favourite books. Kennedy and Fleming had previously met in Washington. This accolade and the associated publicity led to a surge in sales that made Fleming the biggest selling crime writer in the US. Fleming considered From Russia With Love to be his best novel. He said, The great thing is that each one of my books seems to have been a favourite with one or another section of the public, and none has yet been completely damned. In June 1961, Fleming sold a six-month option on the film rights to his published and future James Bond novels and short stories to Harry Saltzman. Saltzman formed the production vehicle Eon Productions along with Albert R. Cubby Broccoli and after an extensive search they hired Sean Connery on a six film deal later reduced to five beginning with Dr No in 1962. In January 1964 Fleming went to Goldeneye for what proved to be his last holiday and wrote the first draft of The Man with the Golden Gun. He was dissatisfied with it and wrote to William Plomer, the copy editor for his novels, asking for it to be rewritten. Fleming became increasingly unhappy with the book and considered rewriting it, but was dissuaded by Ploma, who considered it viable for publication. Also in 1964, after reading the book Peter Rabbit, which he declared as a terrible children's book by one of his literary friends, they challenged him to do better, and Fleming wrote the children's novel Chitty Chitty Bang Bang about an old racing car that could fly, which he published in October 1964, two months after his death. It was later made into a successful movie of the same title in 1968 starring Dick Van Dyke and Sally Ann Howes. Fleming was a heavy smoker and drinker throughout his adult life and suffered from heart disease. In 1961, aged 53, he suffered a heart attack and struggled to recuperate. On the 11th of August 1964, while staying at a hotel in Canterbury, Fleming went to the Royal St George's Golf Club for lunch and later dined at his hotel with friends. The day had been tiring for him and he collapsed with another heart attack shortly after the meal. Fleming died aged 56 at Kent and Canterbury Hospital in the early morning of the 12th of August 1964, his son's Casper's 12th birthday. His last recorded words were an apology to the ambulance drivers for having inconvenienced them, saying, I am sorry to trouble you chaps. I don't know how you get along so fast with the traffic on the roads these days. Fleming was buried in a churchyard at Severhampton near Swindon where we are today his will was proved on the 4th of November with his estate valued at £302,000, equivalent to £6.5 million in 2021. In October 1975, Fleming's son Casper, aged 23, committed suicide by drug overdose and was buried with his father. Fleming's widow Anne died in 1981 and was buried with her husband and their son, Casper. Here at St James's Church in Sevenhampton, near Swindon. So here it is, the final resting place of Ian Fleming here in Sevenhampton at St James's Church and it's right in front of us. And as you've seen from that little video before this, you can't miss it, it's absolutely beautiful, like a small monument to this great man. And there's some Latin written around the top edge of this plaque, which I'm gonna try and read to you in a minute, but please don't slate me, because I might most probably pronounce it wrong, very wrong indeed. So I'll try, that's all I can do. Right, so let's see if we can pronounce this Latin around this top edge. I'm no expert like I've said already, so let's just see how we get on. So I think it says Omnia Perfunctus BTA Premier Marseille. I'm not too sure, 
but it says in memory of Ian Fleming and then down here born the 28th of May 1908 died the 12th of August 1964 and I believe the Latin actually translates to having enjoyed all of life's prizes you now decay and round here we have his dearest son Caspar Robert Fleming who sadly took his own life in 1975 and then engraved in this lovely plaque you can just see the words there it says to cease upon the midnight with no pain I don't know if you can just see that at the bottom it's engraved into this beautiful beautiful plaque here and then round here we have Ian Fleming's wife and Casper's beloved mother Anne Geraldine Mary Fleming born 1913 to 1981 and then engraved around the top edge there is no one like her none there we go what a beautiful plaque and I'm glad they're all buried together here at St James's Church here in Sevenhampton I have to also add back in 2020 on the 13th of September around 10 15 p.m Ian Fleming's plaque that you see in front of me on this beautiful obelisk was removed and stolen by trophy hunters unfortunately I don't think the culprits were ever caught due to the lack of CCTV cameras in this area who would do such a thing removing a plaque on a lovely obelisk like this behind me in memory of Ian Fleming I mean what goes through people's minds it's so disrespectful and downright disgusting I just can't believe it I just don't understand why so before I go I just want to thank Ian Fleming for all his war efforts what he contributed towards the war a true hero in my mind and then creating the absolute iconic spy that is famous throughout the world the most famous spy created throughout the world James Bond 007 I mean this man is truly inspirational so I take my hat off to you Ian Fleming and thank you kind sir may you rest in peace and your wife and your son Casper before I go I just want to ask you a question just like I did in my last video I want to know who your favorite Bond is Sean Connery, George Lazenby, Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton, Pierce Brosnan or Daniel Craig? Who is your favourite? Also, what is your favourite Bond film? And last but not least, which Bond song is your favourite? There's plenty out there, but please don't say Die Another Day by Madonna or Sam Smith's Writing on the Wall. They really were shocking. But there will be plenty of opinions out there, like Adele and Skyfall. But mine is Roger Moore. I grew up with Roger Moore. He is my favourite Bond. My favourite Bond film is The Spy Who Loved Me. It ticked all the boxes. The underwater Lotus, the gadgets, the iconic villain Jaws, the settings in Cairo and in Egypt. It had everything. The submarines. Man, you can't ask for more. And the song, Carly Simon's Nobody Does It Better, that has to be the best Bond song ever, in my opinion. But I may be wrong. You guys may think that Sean Connery is the best Bond ever and that Goldfinger is the best Bond film ever. We all have our different opinions and I can't wait to hear yours in the comments box below. So let's get out there and have a debate, shall we? So to that end, guys, it has unfortunately cometh the end. All I ask you to do is go and give this video a thumbs up. Go and subscribe if you haven't done already. Hit the notification bell for all future notifications on all my videos and I appreciate everybody that has returned or newly subscribed and I will see you all in the next video vlog over